thank you for joining us in another episode of Soul Food First. Please like and follow the Grace TV Facebook page. And please subscribe to the Grace TV YouTube channel. We hope you're ready. Please stand by. Soul Food First is about to be served! Yesterday, we concluded our lesson with a question, what if we do not rightly divide the word of truth? It means that we will take all scripture and we will take the entire Bible, obey everything it says, apply everything that is in there, and follow all the commandments in that book. We know that the result can be very confusing, and we use the example of God's commandments about food. We learned that in the time of Adam and Eve in the garden, they were only allowed to eat fruits and vegetables. In the time of Noah after the flood, all meat was added to fruits and vegetables. In the time of Moses during the law, some food were forbidden. Only those which God prescribed were allowed to them. Then in the present time of the dispensation of grace, the Bible says we can eat everything. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. So imagine if we do not rightly divide the word of truth. It would be really so confusing. And we will be having a hard time which one of these four commands about food we are going to obey. Well, some people, they would say, just choose which one. Well, that would be another problem because then we have a hard time which one we are going to choose because all of them, they are in the scriptures. The truth is, it is not for us to choose. It is for us to follow what God said for us to obey in this present time. If you work at the post office, you do not just give letters to anyone or give all the letters to one person or to one group of people the right thing to do is you read the name and then the address of the letter for example give the letter address to johnny to johnny and then give the letter address to randy to randy do not swap them or else these two people will get so confused and they will not get the message intended for them to receive now if johnny wants to share his letter to randy randy must take note that it is not his letter it is johnny's letter but even if it is not his the letter will serve as an information to him but randy has no obligation to follow and obey what it says now let's continue our lesson and we will talk about the principles and dispensations of God. One of the first lessons that the Bible students should learn in the Bible is the difference between the principles and the dispensations of God. Let's start with the principles of God. A principle is a settled rule of morality or conduct. It is something that is eternal and unchangeable. The principle is also called horizontal truth. It is the truth that we see from the very beginning and it runs all the way to the end without changing. For example, God always did and always will hate sin. Sin always was and always will be contrary to God's holy nature, regardless of time, regardless of people, and regardless of the circumstances, God hates sin. God has never and will never deviate in slightest degree to this principle. Another example is the principle of law and or justice. No matter what the dispensation is, when wrong is done, God's sense of justice is offended. That is always. For example, Cain lived uh, before the dispensation of 
the law. But yet, when he murdered his brother Abel, it was wrong, and he got in trouble over it. David also lived under uh, the time of the law, the law of Moses. He committed murder. It was also wrong, and he was into trouble over it. You and I live in this present time of grace, after the law. Suppose we commit murder today. It is still wrong. And it will be wrong even in the future. And we will be in trouble of that before the law of the land as well as the law of God before his sight. Another example is salvation is always by grace, by blood, and by faith. These are three principles that are present from the very beginning all the way to the end. In all dispensations, these three are always involved when we talk about salvation. Let's start with salvation is always by grace principle. Even from the very beginning, in the Garden of Eden, grace was there. It was God himself who was looking for the sinful man and woman. It was God who made the covering of skin and gave it to him. And it is representing the act of grace and the imputation of God's righteousness to Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21, it's clearly saying, Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. That's the act of God. That's the act of grace. And also that was the time that God considered Adam and Eve right before him through his grace. The Bible also talks about Noah who found grace. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible also talks about Moses who also found grace in the Lord. Every time you see God saving you will see grace there and you will see his unmerited favor demonstrating to the people. Another principle is salvation is by blood. From the very beginning, it was God who killed an animal. He shed the blood. He removed the skin. And throughout the biblical account, there is always that command about animal sacrifice and the shedding of the blood. Why? Because Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 talks about according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of the blood, the Bible says there is no remission of sins. Every time that there is uh, salvation, there is always that involvement and uh, presence of the blood. Even in the time of grace, salvation is also by blood. Apostle Paul talks about it in Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, and it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And then another principle is salvation is by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 records the heroes of faith who were justified by faith in various dispensations or programs in the Bible. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph were some of the people mentioned who were not under the law, but all of them were justified by faith. Also, Moses was mentioned there. Moses was under the law, but the Bible says that he was also justified by faith. We must, however, emphasize that all of them declared as heroes of faith in the past. They had to express their faith in many various works. They had to manifest what they believe and they're going to do that through their works. While works never did or could save as such, they did uh, one save. That was during the time that it was used as an expression of faith. And that was uh, the, the theme of James in his writing in James chapter 2. But in this present time, we are saved by 
God's grace. And that is through faith alone, apart from any outward expressions of works. And that is why that is kind of different than the message in the past. Because before, there is grace and that uh, grace can save, but then the people will believe, but their faith must express out uh, through a form of works. But in our time, we are saved by the grace of God, entirely by grace alone and by faith alone, apart from any expressions or works that we have to show. That is very clear in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. Again, there is grace and there is faith. Let's see if there is works after uh, grace and faith as a way of expressing. The Bible says, And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works, that's very clear, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Beloved, we will end right here, but we'll continue this series tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food.